What's going on everybody and welcome to the channel. Today we are taking a look at the new Holy Stones HS700D. It is a 5G Wi-Fi FPV, 2048 by 1152 pixel resolution, 90 degree remote tilt adjustable, 110 degree field of view camera, GPS RC quadcopter ready to fly with 22 minutes of flight time. So let's open up the box and check it out. All right, guys, so here is the quadcopter. It is looking pretty familiar and yet a little different. Now, I've done a review on the Holy Stones HS700, and this is the upgraded version to that quadcopter. So this is the HS700D, and the noticeable difference right off the bat is this huge camera. It is anti-jello mounted and it is remote tilt adjustable from 0 to 90 degrees and this is a 2K resolution camera and the cable that we are given now is the USB-C to USB-C type connector and another thing that has been upgraded is now we have a push button on and off switch as well. Now this quadcopter is basically identical to the previous version in all ways except those three items that I've mentioned and the battery that we are given and the battery bay is in the rear is the same battery 7.4 volt 2800 milliamp size battery now it is claimed to be good for about 22 minutes of flight time so all you do is just push it in and click it into place now you have the push button on and off switch before, we did not have that push button on and off switch, and once you put it in, the quadcopter will power on. So that is another upgraded item there. So first of all, let's take a look at what we get in the box. We have a quick start guide, as well as a thick instruction manual. And we also have a cautions of the battery pamphlet, so telling you what to do and what not to do with the battery. And we have the phone clip and the phone clip goes on to the remote control and the remote control should look pretty familiar too. There's a rubber grommet placeholder and you just put the phone clip right on there and put the phone on here is spring loaded and the remote control is looking very familiar too. So this is a upgraded version of the HS700 but the HS700 was kind of a rebranded bugs 3 pro so we have the same type of remote control as well so we get the usb c to usb charge cable and we got the charge apparatus now we are able to charge up two batteries but this model only comes with one so what you do is open this up and connect the battery right here let me show you very easy to do so plug in the battery right here connect it and power source this balance charger with the USB-C type connector and power source it with the USB. Now there's a power indicator that turns red and also you have a, a bay 1 and bay 2 indicator for the charging and while it's charging the light will be green and it'll be blinking and once it's finished charging it'll go solid green. Now it took me about good three hours to charge up this battery. It did come with uh, some charge already and it's supposed to take about four to five hours of charge to fully charge up this battery so if you want to add another battery you can purchase this battery online and charge two batteries at the same time all right so let's take a look at what else we get we got some prop guards now i dropped one prop guard onto the desert floor so these are the prop guards and very easy to place the prop guards there's a placeholder just take it out and place the prop right in there one side in and then just the other side and it clicks into place at first it's a little hard to push in but once it goes in there there you go it is solid and it should help protect the prop in case you bang into something and in turn it will help protect the motor and in turn it will help protect the ESC that controls the motor so if you are a beginner do utilize this prop guard very minimalistic prop guard and it should help you out a lot i'm going to go ahead and remove it and it is pretty hard to remove so when you bang into something it's not going to accidentally fall off there now let's put the prop guards on the side and we got a little gift a little notebook marked holy stone 
that is nice and we get a full set of props these are the same props that i've already installed on here these are self-tightening props, so you just spin it the other way that the uh, motor is supposed to spin. Now, it does not come with the props already installed, so you just spin it on there. There's a marker here that says B, and there's a marker on the blade that says B, and you just twist it right on there, and you should be good to go. Let me go ahead and put this back on here so I don't lose it. There we go. Now, the landing legs are clip-on style landing legs as well, as I've demonstrated when I did the HS700 review. So there's a little push button clip here, and you just pull it out. There you go. Pull it out, and you rotate it on, and you can just remove it just like that. So if you take a look, there's a little receptacle there, and you see that little screw? Well, it goes in just like that, and you turn it, and that side is locked in and this side you just push in and it'll click into place oops there you go click into place and it's locked in very easy to install and remove well not that easy <laughs> i had a pretty hard time removing it but that is how you do it and it is a very solid landing gear so it's really really nice and the hs 700 performed very well so this one also should perform very well and we got another little bag containing a screwdriver and a prop removal tool as well. So here is the remote control and the remote control is also looking familiar. Here's the sliding on and off switch. One key to take off, one key to land button and the lock and unlock button. This is the return to home button and the camera button right on the top row. Short press it to take a photo, long press it to take a video. And we also have a rotary dial that functions this time. And that is to adjust the tilt angle of the camera from 0 to 90 degrees. We have a couple of switches here that doesn't have any functions. But this one turns the GPS on and off. And this one turns the headless mode on and off. We got the LCD display. And in the rear we have a couple of buttons as well. But these have no functions also so both sticks to the bottom and in will arm the motors of the quadcopter both sticks to the bottom and out and throttling all the way down and holding it will disarm the motors of the quadcopter as well as pushing this lock and unlock button both sticks to the bottom and to the left will calibrate the gyro of this quadcopter all right so that is just about it so let's go for a little demo flight with the holy stones hs 700 d Okay, so here we go with the test flight of the Holy Stones HS700D, the upgraded version. Now, I did put a 32 gigabyte micro SD card in the DVR slot behind of the camera. It is recommended that you use a class 10 or higher micro SD card, and I've already inserted the battery as well. So all we got to do is press the power on and off switch. So let's go ahead and power it up. There you go, lights come on, and the ESCs have sung their song. All right, so powering up the transmitter, but once you power it on and it does not pair, then what you need to do is hold down this lock button and power up the transmitter at the same time. Now, you only need to do this once in case you switch out a transmitter or something like that and it does not pair right out of the box you need to do that just once and the next time around you just turn on the transmitter and you should be able to bind now you know that the quadcopter is bound because you see the battery life indicator of the transmitter and you see the battery life indicator of the quadcopter's battery so it has a two-way communication all right so you heard a couple of beeps after I turned on the transmitter. That indicates we are ready for compass calibration. So rotating it horizontally and this yellowish greenish light will turn darker green. Horizontal rotation about two to three times and there you go, dark green. At this time you want to go vertical, nose down or nose up, doesn't matter. Or clockwise or counterclockwise, it doesn't matter. And the front lights will turn red from dark green and there you go solid red all right and we also got solid green on the rear tail lights too and the reason why they are solid is because we have acquired all of the necessary gps if it did not the dark green light in the rear will still be blinking so let's take a look at the remote and check it out we got 18 satellites locked in all right so we got the signal strength the 
GPS, the height, the distance, mode, and the battery life indicators. So right now, both sticks to the bottom and left will calibrate the gyros of the quadcopter. And it is still blinking. And it'll go solid. Now we are ready to go, but let's go ahead and start up the app. I'm going to be using my iPad. Okay, there it is. Go into the settings, go into the Wi-Fi section of your settings, and you're going to connect with the Holy Stone FPV Wi-Fi network. Unsecured network, wait until a check mark appears, and there you go. And here is the app. It is called the Ophelia GPS app. Free downloadable app in the App Store. Very similar to, hold on a second, let me start all over. You hit go, you hit next, and you hit click. And we got Wi-Fi FPV. Okay, a little slow in reaction here. Hello, aircraft is not connected, it says. Okay, here we go. Now it is connected and we got movement on the video feed. All right, so let's go ahead and take some photos. I'm gonna see if I can take a photo here. It says photo success. Let's see if it takes a photo with the hard remote. A little slow. I don't know if I took a photo or not, but we should have taken a photo as well. Let me hit it again. Photo success. All right, so long pressing it. And we are taking a video. All right, long pressing it again. Stops the video. And let me go ahead and see if we have taken some photos. Now we have a lots of Icons here, camera, video, camera, video. I got a micro SD card, so we need to go into the micro SD card section and we got three photos and we do have a video, all right? It hasn't had a chance to give you a thumbnail yet, I see. So let's go ahead and take a video. Okay, it started recording, but I'm not sure what's going on with the phone app. I don't see any counter. Okay, here it is. At the top of the app, there's a little red light that is blinking away. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and stop the video. Okay, there we go. And the icon has turned to video as well. So let me go ahead and start my screen record so you guys can see what I'm doing here. Okay, screen is recording. So let's go ahead and make our rounds. A gloomy day to the start here. We had nice blue skies. Photo success, there you go. Taking a photo there. And now the clouds have moved in and it has become very gloomy. But there is no wind. So yeah, we can't have everything all at one time, I guess, during the winter time. Okay, what is going on? The transmitter is beeping away and I have lost connection with the quadcopter and I see that the lights have turned off. Oh, this is something different. So there's some kind of a time limit for you to take off. Otherwise the power shuts down. Okay, let me go ahead and turn off the remote. Turn on the quadcopter once again. So I I'm assuming that is a safety feature. So now turning on the transmitter, we should bind automatically. Okay, double beep, meaning we need to calibrate the compass and you need to calibrate the compass every time before you fly. Dark green lights, yes. And rotating it nose down and waiting for the red light. Okay, so we should take off right away <laughs> instead of wasting a lot of time taking photos. Let's just go ahead and take some photos in the air. Alright, so let's go ahead and hit that video button. 
and we are taking a video and the counter is on so i'm going to go ahead and leave my ipad right here and we'll come back to it in a little bit let's go ahead and check out the core functions of the quadcopter first all right so let's go ahead and arm the motors oh before we do that since we did have to redo the whole thing i didn't calibrate the gyros so you gotta calibrate the gyros on a flat level surface and the lights have turned solid so we are now good to go all right so you can either hit this arm or disarm button or lock or unlock button or you can go bolt sticks to the bottom and in that should arm the motors and bolt sticks to the bottom and out this arms the motors as well as throttling all the way down let's hit the button to arm and then one key to take off there we go and holding position like it should a gps quadcopter there you go letting go of the sticks okay is doing a little bit of a toilet bowl activity and it should come to a position hold now if it does not come to a position hold you will need to bring it down and redo the calibration but looks like it's doing good let's get it angry and let go and it should go back to where it was holding position but it is doing a toilet bowl activity first okay so let's wait until it locks its position okay it should be locking its position here all right that looks pretty good so let's go ahead and check it out here now this is the first time I'm flying this thing also oh yeah very nice nice and smooth now this thing does not have speed control it just has this one speed very smooth and with this brushless motors it looks like it's got nice power as well all right so let's go ahead and bring it in here and establish our home point so i'm going to do the one key to land okay letting go of the transmitter all right position is held one key to land and i can redirect its path while it's coming down and oh check it out came to a little hover first nice to slow down the descent and it is coming down nice and slow there you go and motor shut off nice all right so far behavior is really really nice putting it in the middle of the landing pad i'm going to go ahead and arm it both sticks to the bottom and in and then i'm going to manually take off oh yeah nice power on this thing the 2204 1500 kv motors just like its predecessor okay so letting go of the sticks you should come to a position hold there we go position hold and there's a lot of cloud cover so i don't know if that has anything to do with the uh, gps position but we do have 19 satellites locked in all right so let's go ahead and hit the return to home button rises up to a designated altitude and it is making its way back it doesn't turn around it just makes its way back backwards no beeping going on solid lights holding its position there making sure it is right above the home point and it is starting to descend eating a little prop wash looks like it's slowing down a little bit it should come to a hover there you go it should come to a little hover to slow its descent and then now it just gradually comes down very nice behavior 
and check it out it's landing just about where it took off from maybe just one or two inches off wow very nice okay so next thing we want to do is check out the fail safe return to home so arming the motors again and manually taking off so if you lose connection while you are flying and this thing has pretty decent distance but if you do it's supposed to come back and land itself as well so you can never lose this quadcopter So came to a position hold here. So to simulate, I'm gonna turn off the remote, turning it off. So it should take about six seconds or so till it realizes the disconnection and there you go. Rising up in altitude, this cloud cover really makes it easy to see the quadcopter. Especially the quadcopter is black. Okay, there's no lights flashing also on the quadcopter and it is holding position just like the return to home and it should start making its way down what I'm gonna do is turn on the remote to see if I can take control of it while it's coming down and it does not look like I am let's see throttling up yeah I took control of it while it's descending so even if it's descending I can take control and once the quadcopter comes back and you re-establish connection with your transmitter, you are able to take control again. So automatic take control of this thing here. Nice. All right. So checking it out here. Let's go and do some FPV real quick. All right. So, okay. Is it frozen or? Oh, yeah. It's not. I got video. Wow. It was really steady. I thought I lost connection. It was just frozen in time. And we are still recording. And there I am. He's passing over me. Turning around. Oh yeah. Very smooth. Oh, I lost the video and I got it back. Hopefully the uh, SD card doesn't have those breakups. Just the Wi-Fi connection on my iPad. Now, it depends on what kind of device you are using as well and I'm using an iPad I think it's a fifth generation and there you go quadcopter is way over there I'm turning around and there I am all right so coming towards me very nice very smooth okay so I'm gonna let go of the sticks and let it come to a position lock and check out the tilt angle of the camera. There you go. 90 degree tilt all the way up and all the way down to 90 degrees. So you can see what's directly below it, like a landing spot or something like that. Or wherever you are. All right. It is not proportional though. It just has one speed servo motor that tilts the camera up and down. And check it out there's no props in the view at all all right so i'm going to turn off the gps and now it should just kind of drift along with uh, the light little breeze or because we didn't calibrate it on a flat level surface okay so now we can fly this thing a little bit smoother because it doesn't have that GPS position hold that it is trying to fight off while it's flying. So if you let go of the sticks, it should just gradually drift instead of doing that position hold. So if you want to fly and capture some smoother videos, you can turn the GPS off. By turning the GPS off, you're not turning off all of the features of the GPS, like return to home and stuff like that. You're just turning off the GPS position lock. All right, so here we go, turning around. Oh yeah, very nice. Full pitch. Almost vibration free, this thing. And yawing. 
Well, this thing is just a smooth flyer. And the 110 degree field of view, I lost a little video there. It is really nice, that field of view. Okay, it should be cruising right here. Oh yeah, very nice. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn the GPS back on and check it out. It should come to a position hold. All right. Okay, so we also have headless mode. So let me bring it down a little bit. So I'm pushing it forward. It is going forward, but let me turn on the headless mode and push it forward. Okay, that is the northbound that I've calibrated. So I'm pulling it back, coming back in a complete yaw spin as well. So that is so cool. Okay, so headless mode is good when you are away and you lost orientation or you can go ahead and take some cool videos like a pan shot while you're still flying to keep your subject in place so that is pretty cool too you know all right just spinning away cool nice that is headless mode for you let me go ahead and bring it back in here all right so let me go ahead and turn off headless mode and check this thing out okay so i see lights blinking now the front is in red and the rear is in red also and it is blinking that means we have entered the first phase of low voltage and it is indicated by two bars remaining on the battery life indicator okay so we are still able to cruise around up to 300 meters in distance and 100 meter in altitude so we are still able to fly and that is a really nice safety feature because then if you were away for more than 300 meters it knows that it doesn't have the battery life to bring you back and there we go we're checking out the distance so right now we are 160, 170 meters away and I am pushing it but it is doing a return to home. Yeah, as you can see the green indicator. So it is doing a return to home. So either it sort of got disconnected but I don't have any warning on this thing. So it is doing a return to home. And I believe it will come down. Holding position. But we still do have two bars of battery life remaining. So it is not coming down. It is hovering above the landing pad. So it hovers above the home point and still allows you to fly about. Okay, so what I want to check out is really quick before the battery dies off is the follow me so let's go ahead and hit that follow me function follow me function is not working because insufficient mobile phone GPS signal okay so those functions will have to work with GPS on and this iPad does not have a GPS it is a Wi-Fi only iPad so you will need to use cellular phone or your ipad or your tablet needs to have cellular service in order for the follow me circle me and the waypoints to work so we'll just do some cruising and check it out here and we are still recording we'll check out that camera tilt action again going down yeah so unfortunately it does not have a slower speed in which the camera is tilting down 
So you are stuck with a single speed servo motor that is doing this camera tilting effect. But it is smooth, I can tell you that. There you go. So one way to use the camera tilt is when you're approaching a item of interest. So I'm turning around and I'm going to start coming towards myself here. You can go ahead and go right above yourself and start tilting your camera down so you can see the camera. Woohoo! It is as if I was going to dig into the ground. <laughs> The camera tilt was so low. Yeah, so you can. And then you can tilt it back up. And oh, guess what? It is starting to beep. So we are in the second phase of a return to home, in which the automatic return to home is initiated. So this is the true low voltage return to home and that is indicated by one bar remaining on the battery life indicator and it is going to come down the rear lights are blinking really quick in red and the front lights are still solid red so it will land where you took off from so that is an awesome feature of a gps quadcopter so you can never lose your quadcopter Carefree flying is what I like to call it. And now the remote control does send out an alarm. So on the previous model, when it reached phase one of low voltage, it did beep out three consecutive times over and over, but that has disappeared. That was a little annoying. So you need to look at your lights. And if you are away 300 meters, then it will come back and stay right above the home point and hover there so you will know you are in first phase of low voltage return to home i'm going to go ahead and hit that video button so hopefully we have saved that video so that is just about it and that is the battery life hopefully we got that 22 minutes so a pretty decent clock up the very nice upgrade to the hs 700 and this is the hs 700d with the nicer camera and also the push button on and off switch very very nice quadcopter so that is my review and test flight of the holy stone hs 700d thank you so much for tuning in and watching have a great day and we'll see you again next time